the Department of Freedom presents words from Congressman Dr. Ron Paul. Madam Speaker, I have a few questions for my colleagues. What if our foreign policy of the past century is deeply flawed and has not served our national security interests? What if we wake up one day and realize that the terrorist threat is a predictable consequence of our meddling in the affairs of others and has nothing to do with us being free and prosperous? What if propping up repressive regimes in the Middle East endangers both the United States and Israel? What if occupying countries like Iraq and Afghanistan and bombing Pakistan is directly related to the hatred directed toward us? What if someday it dawns on us that losing over 5,000 American military personnel in the Middle East since 9-11 is not a fair trade-off for the loss of nearly 3,000 American citizens, no matter how many Iraqi, Pakistani, and Afghan people are killed or displaced? What if we finally decide that torture, even if called enhanced interrogation technique, is self-destructive and produces no useful information and that contracting it out to a third world nation is just as evil. What if it is finally realized that war and military spending is always destructive to the economy? What if all wartime spending is paid for through the deceitful and evil process of inflating and borrowing? What if we finally see that wartime conditions always undermine personal liberty? What if conservatives who preach small government wake up and realize that our interventionist foreign policy provides the greatest incentive to expand the government? What if conservatives understood once again that their only logical position is to reject military intervention and managing an empire throughout the world? What if the American people woke up and understood that the official reasons for going to war are almost always based on lies and promoted by war propaganda in order to serve special interests. What if we as a nation came to realize that the quest for empire eventually destroys all great nations? What if Obama has no intention of leaving Iraq? What if a military draft is being planned for for the wars that will spread if our foreign policy is not changed? What if the American people learn the truth? that our foreign policy has nothing to do with national security, that it never changes from one administration to the next? What if war and preparation for war is a racket serving the special interests? What if President Obama is completely wrong about Afghanistan and turns out worse than Iraq and Vietnam put together? What if Christianity actually teaches peace and not preventive wars of aggression? What if diplomacy is found to be superior to bombs and bribes in protecting America? What happens if my concerns are completely unfounded? Nothing. But what happens if my concerns are justified and ignored? Nothing good. And I yield back the balance of my time. It's wake up time for freedom, people. You're with the Department of Freedom. Welcome to tonight's presentation, where we'll be taking a brief look into what has become known as the elusive Bilderberg Group. I am as mad as hell, and I'm not going to take this anymore. The Bilderberg Group is an international, annual, invitation-only conference, usually with more than 120 to 150 of the globe's most influential leaders. In fact, the Bilderberg meetings are a group composed of European royalty, heads of state, Wall Street investors, politicians, international bankers, prominent businessmen, media executives and military leaders from around the globe. It is always closed to the public and the press, and privacy is ensured by none other than armed agents. Questions worth pondering throughout tonight's program. 
Are the Bilderberg members part of a shadow government? Is the Bilderberg group part of the Illuminati, working in harmony with other organizations, such as the Club of Rome, the Trilateral Commission, the Royal Institute of International Affairs, the Council on Foreign Relations, the United Nations, and other nefarious groups? Or perhaps the Bilderberg group are simply members of an elite group, a think tank, sharing thoughts and a spot of tea. It's for you to decide, folks. Enjoy the program on the Bilderbergs. For the last half century, an elite organization called the Bilderberg Group has met annually all around the world in total secrecy, behind closed doors and with no official press coverage. It started in 1954 when the world's most powerful people joined forces in the Netherlands at Hotel Bilderberg, where Prince Bernhard, a former Nazi party member, was integral in its formation. Last year it was in Zurich, Switzerland. It was believed that the group discussed how to handle the Arab Spring at that conference. And this year they're meeting in the wealthy city of Chantilly, Virginia, right next to Washington, D.C. The group is comprised of 130 or so of the world's top elites in politics, banking, food, oil, media, and national defense. Some of the most notable attendees have been Ben Bernanke, Bill Clinton, Timothy Geithner, Bill Gates, Tony Blair, and Colin Powell. Others include Queen Beatrix of the Netherlands, Prince Charles, jo Prince Charles, George Soros, and Alan Greenspan. Henry Kissinger and David Rockefeller are integrally involved as members of the Bilderberg Steering Committee, which is responsible for carefully crafting who will be attending the meetings every year. Some have called the Bilderberg Group a harmless think tank or just a discussion group, but people who have been following it for years say there's something much more sinister at the root. They claim that the group gets together to plan world policy for a new world order of global domination at the subjugation of the rest of humanity. Unfortunately, you won't hear much of a peep about the group's dealings or even the existence of it on the corporate media. This could be because the media moguls that have attended are sworn to secrecy. Check out what Rockefeller has said about the media coverage of Bilderberg. In his memoirs, multi-billionaire David Rockefeller said, quote, some even believe we're part of a secret cabal working against the best interests of the United States, characterizing my family and me as internationalists and of conspiring with others around the world to build a much more integrated global political and economic structure. One world, if you will. And if that's the charge, I stand guilty and I'm proud of it. He also allegedly said that he's grateful to media outlets like the Washington Post, the New York Times, whose magazine directors have attended their meetings and promised to keep it discretionary for almost 40 years, saying it would have been impossible for the group to develop its plan for the new world if it would have been subject to the lights of publicity during all those years. And while the public might not know exactly what's going on there, many people agree that the people who attend the meetings are the world's most powerful movers and shakers. Just take a look at this Drudge poll. It's a poll conducted to ask people what they really think of the Bilderberg Conference. Over half of the people that polled were said that the people who attend the conference are the real power masters of the world. 14% say they think it's just a false conspiracy theory. And 35% say it's a little bit of both. Nonetheless, the secret meeting is definitely coming more and more into the public eye, whether the participants want it to or not. Meanwhile, while Bilderberg attendees were questioned by independent journalists about what really goes on there, they completely skirt the issue or even deny having attended in some instances. So what is really going on in these meetings? What the hell is going on here? That's what I want to know. Next, let's hear from Congressman Dr. Ron Paul and see what he has to say about the Bilderberg. Check it out. Did you hear about that recent uh, Bilderberg group meeting in, uh, what was it, uh, Shantyville, Virginia? Yeah, recently there was one, and there was some reports on it. I didn't read a whole lot about it, but Man. they certainly were there. What do you think they're doing there? <laughs> Seriously, what do you think they're doing there? Well, they probably get together and uh, talk about how they're going to uh, control the banking systems of the world and uh, natural resources. We get together and we talk about how we're going to get our freedom back. So, uh, <laughs> we have our own things to talk about, too. So there you have it, folks. The word up from someone who should know. A congressman, that's right, many times over. And Dr. Ron Paul, that's right, presidential candidate, also many times over, says, what about the Bilderberg? He says they're talking about how they're going to control the banking systems of the world and its natural resources. 
Sounds and smells like a flim flam to me, folks. I don't know about you. <laughs> Next up, let's hear some words concerning Bilderberg Group from none other than radio host Mr. Alex Jones. Check it out. Mysterious and elite. For decades, some of the world's most powerful people have come together to form a secret society of sorts. But now some of their secrets may be exposed. Joining me with more on the Bilderberg Group is radio host Alex Jones. Alex, I'm wondering what you think about this. Uh, does this mean that the ins and outs of the Bilderberg Group will become more mainstream now that this author is coming out uh, to talk about it more? Well, uh, European Union Member of Parliament Mario Borghizio uh, last year questioned in the Parliament uh, why uh, so many uh, heads of EU positions were Bilderberg Group members. And of course, last year, uh, Dutch uh, Member of Parliament Harry von Bommel uh, also uh, petitioned uh, to members of the Bilderberg Group uh, who were in the EU government to explain themselves. So what's happening is uh, more and more people in governments, in, in different European uh, national governments and in the EU government, are realizing that the real decisions are being made at globalist meetings like the Bilderberg Group. And uh, we wrote a story last week at PrisonPlanet.com uh, titled Bilderberg Group, The Open Conspiracy, because uh, you know when Jim Tucker was first reporting on this 32 years ago as a U.S. reporter, people made fun of him and laughed at him and said it didn't even exist. Uh, major publications like the New York Times and Time Magazine said it didn't exist. Well, since then, the Bilderberg Group has been forced to go more public and admit that they covertly set up the European Union, that they do want a planetary government, that they do want world government. And so, so much of their agenda is now promoted by the EU and others. Herman von Rumpy, uh, who's a Bilderberg Group attendee, and of course the head of the EU, has called for global government run by the very central banks that have caused the, the worldwide uh, derivatives crisis. So, yes, uh, just two weeks ago, uh, Zbigniew Brzezinski addressed the Council on Foreign Relations and said for the first time in world history, the entire globe is politically awakened, not to the puppet presidents and prime ministers, but to the real power elite, and that their world government is basically in trouble. And the Council on Foreign Relations, uh, people in the crowd looked very upset. Uh, so this Anglo-American uh, Dutch power structure uh, that's hidden in the shadows and used the energy of the U.S. and England to carry out this world government is in trouble because the American people and others are waking up to the fact that we've been used as the engine uh, of this covert empire. Uh, Alex, and so I there's a major... I want to interrupt you just real quick. Um, I think you make a good point in talking about how it really did used to be uh, viewed as sort of a conspiracy. And uh, a lot of people didn't see the, the validity in talking about this as something that was real. But many of the predictions that the Bilderberg Group has made, especially relating to the economy and the financial meltdown in Europe, have been extremely accurate. Talk a little bit about that and how that has sort of altered public perception. Well, sure. I mean, you get 150 or so, uh, previously it was about 125, of the heads of Dutch Royal Shell, royalty, the, the head of the Dutch Royal House, the Rockefellers, the Rothschilds, all together as really a mafia commission meeting, and they're deciding on any disputes and the agenda uh, for the following year. Uh, because they're already going in the basic direction they want to go, but there's minor tweaks going on. So. Two years ago, I traveled to Virginia and covered the Bilderberg Group, and the intel we got from inside was that Obama had been chosen and that Hillary was going to step down from the campaign. That was done two days later after we announced it. Uh, we were able to discover that the Bilderberg Group was planning to run gas prices up to $150 a barrel. People laughed at us. It then happened in the next year. Uh, the Bilderberg Group said that they'd made deals to have the stage collapse of the Berlin Wall. Jim Tucker reported on that a full year before it happened. Uh, Jim Tucker uh, also reported from his Bilderberg inside sources uh, that uh, they were, uh, that Bush was going to announce that he did believe in global warming and wanted carbon taxes. Uh, and that became uh, you know, a verified documented truth later. When the Washington Post was announcing that the attack on Iraq was going to be 2002, uh, American Free Press and others reported from their Bilderberg sources uh, that uh, the uh, owners of the Washington Post, Mr. Graham, uh, had attended and knew that it was going to be in March of 03. That was later confirmed. So yes, the Bilderberg Group is the highest level of world government, but they have their public 
uh, uh, propaganda that they put out at Davos uh, and at other uh, forums uh, and events. And, and, and more and more, what the secret of Bilderberg Group is doing behind closed doors is more and more being put out publicly uh, because they've now been revealed. They're having to admit their world government agenda but they're putting a spin on it that it's good and humanitarian. And we cover this in my film, uh, The Obama Deception. But yes, they're in a lot of trouble because the planet is waking up uh, to their covert uh, criminal operation. Uh, just very, very briefly, Alex, the uh, secrecy and the privacy, how important is that? Well, it's very important that Bilderberg uh, keep its inner working secret. It's okay if stuff from decades ago comes out, but they don't want it, uh, you know, the new information to come out because their agenda can then be uh, thwarted. Their main function now is vetting European, British, and U.S. politicians. Uh, that is one of their most important functions. More and more, they're being made uh, not obsolete. It's just that the global pace has forced the Bilderberg Group uh, to... Uh, Alex, I'm going to have to cut you off. I'm so sorry. We are out of time. Uh, Thank always, you. always like hearing from you. And there you have Mr. Alex Jones getting all excited talking about the Bilderberg. And if I heard him right, what did he say about the Bilderberg Group meetings, folks? I think he called it a Mafia Commission meeting. That's right, folks. I'm down with that. Next up, who's this guy? Jim Tucker that Alex kept referring to. Well, folks, from Alex Jones' documentary Endgame Blueprint for Global Enslavement, meet Jim Tucker. This is the global government. They are setting the world agenda. Inside right now, they're deciding on whether or not there will be a war with Iran, whether or not taxes will increase, whether oil prices will be suppressed. Veteran newspaper reporter Jim Tucker has been covering the Bilderberg meetings for over 30 years. 120 of the world's most powerful men, heads of state from Europe, high officials of the United States government. First heard about Bilderberg in 1975, and I said, I don't believe it. Who in hell is Bilderberg? And why is it so secret? Why does it have armed guards outside? Why is it sealed off? The newspapers totally ignore it. The reason they want secrecy is because they're doing evil. Evil is done under the cover of darkness. Good works are done in the sunshine. Since then, I've never stopped pursuing Bilderberg or the whole international gangster organization. Hey, is the hotel open? Is Bilderberg meeting here this weekend? So, Jim, you got the list. Yeah. That's the part that's been on our ass. Yeah. Some shots were fired, but they were far above my head. Well, they're very likely Bilderberg boys. And only an educated, informed public can stop them in their tracks. And there you have it, folks. You've been introduced to Mr. Jim Tucker, and you heard him say only an educated and informed public can stop them in the tracks, referring to the Bilderberg group. Right in my hand, folks, I have the Bilderberg Diary put out by the American Free Press back in 2005. And I'll tell you some of the things that you can learn from Jim's book that there is, in fact, a highly organized conspiracy between influential politicians and bankers to give each more of what they crave, power and money. That both of these have been contributed by you and millions of other deluded taxpayers and voters. That the conspiracy includes bringing down all national governments and, by fraud and bribery, substituting a world government. And that the consumers, taxpayers, and voters are victimized by the so-called free press, which is literally part of the conspiracy. That wars are started to advance the interests of those acolytes of evil who routinely send thousands of deceived young men to die while they pocket the wages of sin, and much, much more in Jim's book, The Bilderberg Diary. Next on this evening's program, we are going to hear from researcher, journalist, and author of the book, The True Story of the Bilderberg Group, meet Daniel Estelin. Now, secretive and elite, the Bilderberg Group, which unites some of the world's most powerful people, has been meeting behind closed doors for decades. Its activities have become shrouded in a mist of conspiracy theories, with some claiming the members are trying to create a new world order. Well, one investigative journalist has just revealed to the European Parliament all he claims to have discovered about the Bilderbergers. And Daniel Estelin joins me now live from Brussels. And many thanks for joining us this evening, Mr. Estelin. Uh, so tell us more about what you found out about the group and what you believe it does. 
Well, thank you. First of all, thank you so much for having me. Uh, uh, I found out over almost 20 years of research uh, 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 that uh, what's today is called the Bilderberg Group already existed over 800 years ago. They were back then called the Venetian Black Nobility. In fact, Bilderberg is the creation of the uh, of the synarchy movement of empires, who are the uh, the plenipotentiary founders and and financiers of Hitler and uh, Synarchy International. They in turn uh, were founded by the Martinist uh, Freemason Esoteric Secret Society back in the 1770s as a kind of counterattack on the principles of which, upon which the United States of America was built. So again, it's uh, a lot of people speak of Bilderberg as a domain of conspiracy theories. Of course, it's not. It's a historical fact. And again, what's today called Bilderberg 800 years ago existed. It was called back then the Venetian Black Nobility. So interesting to hear that background. But what is it that you believe the group actually does today and what evidence do you have to back up your claims? Well, the interesting thing is that a lot of people uh, believe that Bilderberg is about one world government or creating the new world order, especially people point out to speech made by George W. Bush back in the 1990s about the creation of one world government. It's actually, it's not about that at all. It's, it's a meeting of people who represent a particular ideology. That ideology is of money. So the idea is not to create one world government, but rather the creation of one world company limited, where the uh, uh, financial concerns are far more powerful than any government on earth. And we actually we're seeing right now as evidence very very simple uh, we had to see in Europe we had nation states we had countries with our own constitutions our own flags our own currencies our own monetary policies and now we don't have any of that the entire Europe is being led and directed through Brussels in that sense Spain where I live you know it has a currency we lost it we had a constitution that's now subordinate to the European Constitution uh, Spanish flag is no longer ours it's the European flag with little stars and of course the monetary policy is decided somewhere else and we can see what they're doing and Greece is a very good example of that that destruction you know we're witnessing and Spain of course is going to be the next country to go so why was the European Parliament so interested in hearing about your findings and what reaction did you get well, actually, the European Parliament was not was was profoundly upset that I'm here. I was invited by Liga Norte by Mario Mario Borghesio, uh, the one of the senior European uh, representatives from Italy, who uh, came across Bilderberg actually in the Italian version of my book about eight months ago. Well, he didn't know that these people existed, and the fact that some of the key decision-making process over the past 60 years were taking at Bilderberg obviously surprised and astonished him. And so, through him, I was invited to make a speech, a historic speech, in fact at the European Parliament about the Bilderbergers and their roots, which was called Bilderberg Towards One World Company Limited. So can you give us some names, some examples? Who is actually a part of this so-called Bilderberg group? Well, this is the old NATO alliance. So you're talking about the European presidents, uh, Prime Minister of Canada, the sitting president of the United States, top 50, 60 CEOs of the world's leading corporations, uh, uh, American senators and congressmen, European commissioners, all of the European royalty, of course, as president. Finally, you know, talking about as well the leading bankers, the International Monetary Fund, the World Bank, the European Central Bank, the uh, uh, the World Bank, and uh, and finally they're joined, and uh, we have a lot of noise. I hope you can still hear me. Uh, uh, we're joined at this one big table in the Bilderberg Conference by the leading representatives of, uh, of uh, world media, such as New York Times, Washington Post. And the fact that you have 120 of these mammoth representatives in one room, and the fact that the press never, ever reports on them until my book came out, by itself is astonishing. Fascinating theories. And what impact do you think that your findings in your speech uh, to the European Parliament will have on the group, if any, briefly, if you can? I'm sorry, you're going to have to repeat that because, again, there's a lot of noise coming from No, that's to my fine. Right. Just very briefly, if you can, what impact do you think that your findings and your speech that you gave to the European Parliament will have on the group, if any? Well, I, I'm, I'm hoping it's going to be you know, an effect of an atomic bomb going off right in the middle of the parliament. A lot, obviously not literally, but figurative. The point is that uh, Borghesio, that's Liga Norte group, is getting hundreds of calls from curious Italian uh, uh, media representatives who actually have never heard of Bilderbergers themselves. And uh, so they want to know exactly how the decisions made at this uh, very private organization fit into the world scheme. And, and Russia, in this particular sense, is very much a part of it or a victim of it. Is 
as I reported back in 2005. By the summer 2008, Bilderberg is at their meeting talking about pushing the oil price to about $150 a barrel, and then they decided to push the oil price down, orchestrating it fall to about $30 a barrel, and it effect directly affects Russia because, again, China and Russia are the two main enemies of the people who are trying to create this one world government, and Russia having a lot of oil. If you can actually destroy the oil price and push it down, you're destroying Russia economy and China on the other hand which has no oil to speak of anything you make requires a lot of oil so by pushing the oil price by orchestrating you know the uh, the price at hundred and forty seven and a half dollars a barrel you're destroying the Chinese economy so yes Russia is needless to say has been on the receiving end of the uh, Bilderberger planning and scheming Okay, fascinating theories and a frightening thought, a figurative atomic bomb taking, uh, taking off in the European Parliament today. Okay, for now, many thanks. That was investigative journalist Daniel Estrin talking to us from Brussels. So uh, what do you think there, folks? Is there a club? Are you part of that club? Seems to me, folks, we're getting clubbed by the Bilderberg Club, if you know what I'm saying. So let's all remember this, people. It's the Bill of Rights, not the Bilderberg. Do you know what I'm saying? Now it's time we ask the question. So aren't there any laws against such meetings? <laughs> well, let's take a look, folks. See, there's the Logan Act. It's the United States federal law that forbids unauthorized citizens from negotiating with foreign governments. It was passed in 1799 and last amended in 1994. Violation of this Logan Act is a felony punishable under federal law with imprisonment up to three years. The text of the Logan Act is broad and is addressed at any attempt of a U.S. citizen to conduct foreign relations without authority. Okay, moving on. Is the Bilderberg meeting illegal? This is a story by Kurt Nimmo at Infowars.com. Check that website if you'd like more details about this. The question is whether U.S. officials attending the meeting are, of course, in violation of the Logan Act. And the Logan Act reads, well, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you, but it basically says that any elected officials acting with the authority of the United States of America cannot con engage in secret meetings with foreign nationals, cannot be involved in foreign government decisions. This is a, a violation of law, but it's never been enforced, or at least not in recent memory. So if you look at the Bilderberg participant list, you see a large number of U.S. citizens, including... U.S. Senator John Kerry, the governor of Indiana, who we mentioned earlier, the national security advisor and a large number of bankers, business CEOs, and assorted other individuals. Should they be prosecuted under the Logan Act? This is a legitimate question for all American citizens, and it should be a question on the minds of people at the Department of Justice. After all, they're responsible for serving justice, and doesn't that mean enforcing laws against this kind of thing? Makes you wonder who they're actually serving. It's time for a few chuckles, folks, as the Department of Freedom bids you good night. I'm looking forward to meeting with President Barack Obama without preconditions to negotiate our demands of submit or die. We have much in common, the same supporters, the same allies, and we both have friends who blew up the Pentagon. Why aren't people shocked or something? Why aren't people up in arms? Does anyone read history or see red flags or hear alarms? But the question I do want SCI you to ask yourselves is not who's talking about your agenda, but who can change our politics in Washington so we can actually make your agenda a reality. <laughs> Probably wouldn't be standing here if it hadn't been for the SEIU endorsement. His grandparents were socialists, his mother was, his father was a communist. Your agenda's been my agenda in the United States Senate. Before debating health care, I talked to Andy Stern and SEIU members. Eat on how the government take over the banks and the car industry. And now he's trying to jam down our throat socialized medicine. This is a test of the emergency bomb health system. The bomb hit is in your area and voluntary defense. Federal, state, and local authorities have developed this system to keep you informed in the event of a bomb hit emergency. 
If this had been an actual emergency, the attention signal you just heard would have been followed by official supply information, police scanner news, and emergency bong hitting instructions. This concludes this test of the emergency bong hit system. Quit playing games with God! <laughs> Wake up, America!